What are some of the trends in the 2020s which could affect your investments? That's going to be the topic of today's video. Okay, if you answer, if you're a high net wealth individual or an expat in particular, go over to adamfire.com and see how I can help you. Now on this video, I'm going to talk about the 2020s. Now, it's going to be obviously a long decade. We're only a couple of years into the decade. And it's interesting, before this decade started, at the end of 2019, I made some predictions online about the way the world was going to go online and so on. It was already going online, but it was going to go more in that direction. Obviously, nobody can predict the future. Nobody could have predicted COVID and how that's kind of fast-tracked the world, you know, in the direction of online business and commerce and so on. But some of the following trends could be positive and negative for investments. So, for example, trend number one is more protectionism and deglobalization. So uh, a lot of you might have seen the news about the UK and how the UK has a problem getting lorry drivers uh, for a number of reasons, both due to the pandemic, maybe Brexit, maybe also other issues like many young people don't want to do that kind of job because it's a hard job which requires a lot of unsociable hours and things like that. So what's happening now is actually real wages are going up in the UK at the fastest rate for a long time. And um, that's a very good thing for a lot of people because from 2008 until about uh, you know, 2019, 2020, real wages were stagnant in many advanced economies, but now they're higher than they were before and they're going up in many sectors, they're going up by a lot because of labor shortages. And what's interesting is even in China last year, 3 million people left the workforce. So it's funny, a lot of people are worried about automation, but actually we could be seeing a glut of labor around the world as more countries become old and indeed aging in general, so more people are pushed beyond uh, retirement age. So that could actually lead to more inflation or it could lead to more companies trying to automate more things away because let's face it, if you've got, you know, a big shortage, one of the ways to deal with that is to try to focus on automation because the average lorry driver in the UK is 55, for example. So if you can't get in the visas for the people to come into the country, more uh, company owners might try to automate, but that's not gonna work in all industries. So we could see um, you know, higher inflation if there's a supply issue with labor. And that kind of links me to another issue though. Increased global inequality has been an issue now for many people, you know, in politics for more than a decade. But this particular aforementioned uh, trend could uh, move that into reverse. And what's interesting is at the moment, in many developed countries, there is actually a backlash against the so-called rich. Now, I've talked about this on other videos before, but this could lead to higher wealth taxes, higher taxes on dividends, higher tax on stocks, which could affect all investors around the world. So a lot of these trends aren't particularly good, you would think, for the economy and maybe stocks. However, there's a lot of other trends going on which could be very productive for the price of assets. For example, interest rates are low. Now, they might not be low forever, especially if inflation picks up, but that is good for asset prices because companies can actually invest at very low rates uh, of interest and reinvest back into the company. Likewise, things like AI and machine learning, that's only going to get bigger over time. So there's always going to be trends for and against, um, you know, rising asset prices. But one thing I would say is in the long term, people who are willing to kind of stick it out always tend to do well. So if we were doing this video, say in 1942, when Hitler was moving through Europe, very few people would have been positive about stocks, but somebody who invested $10,000 then would have over $50 million now if they put it into the S&P 500. Likewise, in the late 70s, early 80s, many people were pessimistic in the world, but then stocks had a great period of time. So I wouldn't care too much about the trends in the future. Keep on top of them. Always watch out for your portfolio, but don't worry too much. How can I help you in two ways? First of all, are you an expat, a high net wealth individual, or just somebody who lives in a part of the world where it's difficult to get access to quality investment solutions. In which case, go onto my website on adamfired.com and find out more. If you don't fit into any of those categories, then in which case there's a range of free 
material on my website, on this YouTube channel, and indeed on my Quora, where I get over 200 or have received over 231 million views uh, in the last few years. And finally, if you want to uh, actually read my thoughts in more detail, go onto Amazon and find my book on there.